say, I am returning back. Thank you. To God in my thinking. Amen. Transforming my thinking. Change me, Lord, to think your thoughts and not my own. To think the thoughts of love, thoughts of your kingdom, thoughts of peace, thoughts of prosperity, thoughts of health, no sickness, no lack, abundance only, the grace of Jesus. Amen. We want to think God's thoughts. Praise the Lord. I want to read some scriptures starting from Genesis to go back to the book of beginnings. From the message. <coughs> Chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. Message. And we're just going to read through these scriptures here. This is the family tree of the human race when God created... The human race, he made it godlike with a nature akin to God. He created both male and female and blessed them, the whole human race. When Adam was 130 years old, he had a son who was just like him, his very spirit and image, and named him Seth. So um, there was Cain and Abel. This This is afterwards, right? After the birth of Seth, Adam lived... Another 800 years, having more sons and daughters. I wonder how many he had in 800 years. You could do a bit of business, couldn't you, in 800 years? Mm. Especially when they were youthful. Adam lived a total of 930 years and he died. When Seth was 105 years old, he had Enosh. He didn't seem to be in any rush in those days. We got busy in our 20s. 105, I think I'll have a kid. Mm. <laughs> Enosh after Seth had Enosh he lived another 807 years having more sons and daughters Seth lived a total of 912 years and he died when Enosh was 90 years old he had Kenan after he had Kenan he lived another 815 years having more sons and daughters Enos lived a total of 905 years and he died. When Kenan was 70 years old, he had Mahalalel. He got reeling along a bit quicker than the others, didn't he? <laughs> 70 years, I think I'll have a kid. After he had Mahalalel, he lived another 840 years, having more sons and daughters. Kenan lived a total of 910 years and he died. When Mahalalel was 65 years old, he had Jared. After he had Jared, he lived another 830 years, having more sons and daughters. Mahalalel lived a total of 895 years and he died. Didn't live as long as blood. Couldn't even do 900. Started yeah, must have lived a bit more of a full-on life. Huh? When Jared was 962 years old, he had Enoch. After he had Enoch, he lived another 800 years, having more sons and daughters. Jared lived a total of 962 years and he died. When Enoch was 65 years old, he had Methuselah. We know Methuselah lived the longest, didn't he? So Methuselah was Enoch's son. Enoch walked steadily with God. After he had Methuselah, 65 years old, he had Methuselah. He lived another 300 years, having more sons and daughters. Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Interesting. Enoch walked steadily with God. And then one day, he was simply gone. God took him. So he he really didn't get to know the Lord and walk with God until he was 65 300 years, he walked steadily with God. Growing in relationship, friendship with God, having more sons and daughters, living life. He had a life to live, lived life. God took him. When Methuselah was 
197 years old, he had Lamech. After he had Lamech, he lived another 782 years. Methuselah lived a total of 969 years and he died. 969. Isn't that amazing? When Lamech was 182 years old, he had a son and named him Noah, saying this one will give us a break from the hard work of farming the ground that God cursed. When Noah was born, he, we know from other writings, some ancient books, and as I said last week, Enoch as well as others were taken from the scriptures. They were around for many, many, many hundreds of years, but they were taken because Satan wanted to trick the human race, remove the image of God, understanding of who we really are. But Noah was born shining. Now he wasn't a Nephilim or an angel. He was, a, he was born a human, but he was, he was, he, uh, his inside was shining through. Hallelujah. And uh, freaked him out. <laughs> sort of sons this. He lit the room where they were. Where they, where they were. This one will give us a break from the hard work. After Lamech had Noah, he lived another 595 years, having more sons and daughters. Lamech lived a total of 777 years, 777, and he died. When Noah was 500 years old, he had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So we see that Adam had sons and daughters. And... Uh, First two, one was, uh, he got grumpy and killed the righteous. God had to have another one. Seth and Dan, the lineage came. So seven down was uh, Enoch. So it was a while before Enoch came on the scene. And then after Enoch was Methuselah, Lamech was nine and then Noah was ten. So Noah was the great grandchild of Enoch. Methuselah, Methuselah was the son of uh, Enoch and Noah was the grandson of Methuselah. Let's keep reading. When the human race began to increase with more and more daughters being born, the sons of God noticed that the daughters of men were beautiful. They looked them over and picked out wives for themselves and God said, I'm not going to breathe life into men and women endlessly. Eventually they're going to die. From now on they can expect a lifespan of 120 years. This was back in the days and also later when there were giants in the land. The giants came from the union of the sons of God. Not human sons. Uh, they were watching watcher angels with flesh on them. God's got many different types. And their job was to watch over. Remember, the human race had fallen by this time. And the angels were giving place to watch over them and keep them and guard them. Help the prayers be answered. Take care of them and keep them from these evil spirits. But they left their place, the Bible says, and they conjured up a uh, thought, an evil thought. They looked at the, the women and they liked the look of them. And uh, they were able to uh, copulate with them, obviously, in some way. And giants were born and all sorts of things and the earth became so wicked. God saw, verse 5, that the human evil was out of control. People thought evil, imagined evil, 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 evil from morning to night. There's not a lot in the Bible about this. We've got some scriptures like this. But there are other books being removed that there was quite a bit about it. So we, we're not supposed to be totally in the dark about this. When Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so will the coming of the Son of Man. But we have to know, well, what was the days of Noah like? The Bible has some in there, but not a lot in there. But there's plenty of other books that do have a lot about it. Why was it taken? Many reasons. One, I guess, would be so that we wouldn't know the times, wouldn't understand the times, wouldn't know the season, wouldn't understand what happened, because what happened then is going to happen again. As in those days it will be, it will be like it. Remember God flooded the earth with water. He said he'd, when he put his bow in the sky that I would not never flood the earth with water again, but there would be a flood. And Peter talks a bit about it, but we don't see much detail. There's a flood of the glory, and the glory is the presence. It's the fire. There will be a fire that will cleanse. The glory is going to come and cleanse. I believe it's already rising in the earth. So it was out of control. God was sorry that he made the human race. In the first place, it broke his heart. God said, I'll get rid of my ruined creation. Make a clean sweep. 
people, animals, snakes and bugs. See, creation was ruined because it got contaminated. It was contaminated with the evil seeds and the mischief. But Noah was different. Say different. different. Some people don't understand that God has people born for a time and season and purpose. Predestined for ordained. The scripture says we're all predestined for ordained. We're born now because this is the time we're supposed to be here. But the devil doesn't want you to know who you are, number one, and why you're here and what you're to do. He doesn't want you to know that. Why? Because that's the destiny. If you find out that and you fulfill your destiny, you've got to do a lot of damage to him. So if I can just get them all thinking all sorts of things and get them thinking of anything else, even just read your Bible all the time. Don't know anything else, just read it. Don't understand it, just read it. <laughs> just be religious. Just hallelujah all the time, but don't really understand why you're here, what you're doing, who, you, who are you. Not knowing your destiny, you will never fulfill it. So therefore, you'll be another one that goes on. Doesn't bring much change. Does a little bit, does a few good things, loves a few people, does some good works. Loved by God, loved by many. Have a funeral, everyone cries. But God wants more than that. He wants people like Noah who come with destiny, it's understood, and they fulfill it. God has destiny for every soul, not just Noah, everybody. But at that time, Noah was the only one left who was not contaminated. Some believe even his wife had some sort of contamination. God had to use the only thing left. One. One's enough. Blood comes through the man, it's enough. And, um, and, and, and the sons were born. God started over, as we know, from, the, from, from that place. Noah was different. God liked what he saw in Noah. See, he wasn't contaminated. It wasn't because Noah was perfect. He was innocent and in that he had not become contaminated. He refused to get involved with what they're getting involved in. And we know there was a time, we know through history, not so much in the Bible, but through history books, they all died out and the righteous died out before the flood came. And there's a prophecy saying from Enoch, and there's also in the scriptures, that, that Methuselah would pass before the flood. Mm. He was a righteous one, said. All the righteous removed, and then only Noah left. Noah was different. This is the story of Noah. Genesis 6. Nine. Noah was a good man, a man of integrity. In his community, Noah walked with God. Huh. I wonder who he learned that from. <laughs> Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. As far as God was concerned, the earth had become a sewer. There was violence everywhere. God took one look and saw how bad it was. Everyone corrupt and corrupting. Life itself corrupt to the core. The very DNA. The very genetics. God said to Noah, it's all over. It's the end of the human race. The violence is everywhere. I'm making a clean sweep. He did. Build yourself a ship from teak wood. Make rooms in it. Cut it with pitch inside and out. Make it 450 feet long. Some say it wasn't very big compared to today's ships. Listen, 450 feet long is big. 330 feet or something is a length of 100 metres. Sprint. You sprint from one end of the ship for the other. Unless you're Usain Bolt and do it 9.7 something seconds, whatever he's done it in. And this is longer than that. Most of us would take, well, some of us in this room, it might take us 30 seconds. <laughs> No criticism, take it in five minutes. I don't know how John, fast John could do it. If you don't wake up, it'd take him longer than that. <laughs> I was about to do it in 12 point something. I was fast, but not that fast. This is a big boat. And it was tall and it was wide. And it had levels. And it floated. So I'm going to bring a flood. God's going to bring a flood. Total destruction, he said. Verse 18, but I'm going to establish a covenant with you. You'll board the ship and your sons, your wife and your sons' wives will come on board with you. You are also to take two of every living creature, a male and female on board the ship to preserve their lives with you. Actually, a uh, mistranslation is seven. Anyway, I'll worry about that now. Some are two, some are sevens. 
two of every species of bird, mammal, reptile, two of everything, so as to preserve their lives among your sons. Also, all the food you get and store it up for you and them. Noah did everything God commanded him to do. Here's a key. So, he just, just did, just did. Found his destiny out. This is what God was. Build a boat. What's that? God had to show him, give him the dimensions. All right. You don't have to understand everything to obey. You just have to just go ahead and fulfill what he, what you can see, what you what he shows you, all that he reveals. Next, God said to Noah, "Now board the ship, you and all your family. Out of everyone in this generation, you're the righteous one. Take on board with you seven pairs of every clean animal, a male and a female. One pair of every uh, unclean animal, a male and a female. See, it said it right down here. Seven pairs of every clean animal." Hmm. Yeah, God's wise. Now what if he took two and one of them carked it? It's alright, there's a few more. We're going to preserve. Um, we're going to preserve the uh, creation. In just seven days, I will dump rain on earth 40 days and 40 nights. I'll make a clean sweep of everything that I've made. Noah did everything God commanded him. Did I just read that? Sorry. Noah was 600 years old, verse 6. Genesis 7, 6. When the floodwaters covered the earth. So here's 600. Noah and his wife and sons and their wives boarded the ship to escape the flood. Clean and unclean animals, birds, all the crawling creatures came in pairs to Noah and to the ship, male and female, just as God had commanded Noah. In seven days, the floodwaters came. So they got into the... Now, Methuselah died. They got into the boat, Methuselah died. Everybody listening. End of the boat, Methuselah died. God closed the door. Seven days, the floodwaters came. So, okay, they're hidden away in the boat. And he was crazy old Noah, remember? Crazy Noah, mocking Noah, laughing all the way up the ramp, all the animals coming, getting in there, peer, everyone getting there, all that bunch. Massive big structure. Never seen anything like it before. Sitting on dry land. Outside, day one. Night time. Day two. Night time. Time seven. Giggling, chewing, laughing. Probably most of them left. Look at the idiot. After seven days, what happened? Floodwaters came. Floodwaters came. It happened. 600th year of Noah's life. It's got the second month on the 17th day of the month. All these are recorded because God's a God of numbers. Yeah. He's, a, he's a mathematician of the highest order. Everything's got significance, got a number, got a season, got a time, got a rhyme, got a smell, got a scent, got a sight, got a colour. Um, we're so fallen. The moon if it's seen through the right spectrum, it's colourful. It's got all these colours in it. But you can't see it. I always can't see it. But you look through the right sort of lenses and I think, oh, the moon becomes colourful. Colourful moon? Of course. God's, God's a colourful God. The floodwaters continued 40 days and the waters rose and lifted the ship high over the earth. The waters kept rising. The flood deepened on the earth. The ship floated on the surface. The flood got worse until all the highest mountains were covered. The high water mark reached 25 feet above the crest of the mountains. Everything died. Anything that moved, dead. Birds, farm animals, wild animals, the entire teeming exuberance of life, dead. All the people, dead. Every living, breathing creature that lived on dry land died. He wiped out the whole works, people and animals, crawling creatures and flying birds. Every last one of them gone. Only Noah and his company on the ship lived. Doesn't sound like a very loving God, does it? He just, he just kills everything in sight. The floodwaters took over for 150 days. That's what the snowflakes would be saying. No, no, no God like this. Um, Luke 17, 26, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be also at the days of the coming of the Son of Man, the days of the coming. What were the days like leading up to Noah? What were the days like in Noah's day? What were the days like leading up to the floodwaters? Why did it happen? It's written. 
That's why I started to share. I felt it was time last week, and then we'll continue and you know, share some things. But uh, we've got to get back what's been lost and stolen. We've got to return back to God in our thinking. And it's not going to be automatic. It has to be a transforming process. Jude, uh, let's just read a few scriptures quickly. Hebrews 11 verse 5. By an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked all over and couldn't find him because God had taken him. We know on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. Reliable testimony? Yeah. They had it recorded. And others picked up on it. Paul knew about it because Paul read the old books and it was written down. Peter knew about it. Um, two, 1 Peter 3, 20. They wouldn't listen. You know, even though God waited patiently all the days that Noah built his ship, only a few were saved then. Eight to be exact, saved from the water by the water. <laughs> saved from the flood waters by the water. They were, they were buoyant on that very water that destroyed the others. If the fire comes to do a cleansing work on the earth, God will protect us with that same fire. The fire will hurt one and the fire will save another. Amen? The fire will purify one, the fire will destroy another. The fire will burn up dead works and the living works will, will pass through and be purified and come out. Better. Hmm. Fire is purifying, but fire is also destructive. And we see um, Adam and Eve lived in the cave of treasures and as they came out and went to go back in one time, there was a fire all around that didn't know what fire was. Any remembrance of fire they had were the uh, seraphs that were the burning, blazing angels. And they, they knew they had that fire in them once, but it was taken. So they felt that God was going to punish them and not let them back in the cave, not realising it was Satan setting up uh, bushfires <laughs> around to trick them. Mm. See, Adam and Eve had fallen, but they hadn't fallen from all their innocence. Their minds had not been uh, contaminated with the filth of the world. They, were just, they had fallen from their place and it took time for them to realise that God still loved and still cared because Satan had tricked them and it tried to infiltrate their purity with his evil seed. It was a big fall, but there was innocence still there. Some feel that Adam and Eve didn't. It's recorded in some books whether it's true or not that Adam and Eve didn't sin afterwards again. They um, kept themselves because they were so grief stricken. They didn't uh, want to ever do that again. They had a proper fear of God. Uh, 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Um, neither did he let the ancient ungodly world off. He wiped it out with a flood, securing only eight people. Noah, the sole voice of righteousness, was one of them. Um, so he didn't let the ungodly world off. We see the patience as in the days of Noah, waiting, 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 mocking, mocking, mocking. Seemingly the righteous getting lost and destroyed and dying off. And just down to just a remnant. And of course, there's going to be more than one in these days. God's doing a great work. But it still may not be the majority as in percentage-wise. But God doesn't need many. He only need a one once. And he wants many. But if there's only a few, when it's time, he'll use the few. And he's a God of, a, a God of such patience and long-suffering. But when the time came, the, ungod the ungodly, the scripture says in Second Peter here, they didn't get let off. And that's what we must remind ourselves with, with the days of Noah. Eventually, God locked them away and the floodwaters came. And they perished. Jude 14. Jude verse 14. Enoch, the seventh after Adam, prophesied of them, Look, 
The master comes with thousands of holy angels. Enoch was able to see into the future to who the master was. Ancient of days. Saw him. Saw what he would do and saw all those that would be born because of him and all their destinies. You know, such a special, such a special son. He was chosen. He was special in that he decided to live close to God, but he was special in that he was predestined, foreordained for that purpose. And he was shown all the future generations to come. He saw the time of the end where the, where the Lord would come with thousands with the host and they'd come and destroy all the works of the wicked. He saw all that. He saw the destinies of everybody. There was a purpose for Enoch's coming. And there's a purpose to start having this information um, restored because it's time to be the Enoch generation. I said to a prophet once, and God's always put prophets there in my life and they speak different things and it's confirmed through other prophets. And it's something I don't share much here because it's my destiny. Everyone has a destiny. And um, I, I asked this person why I'm so intrigued with Enoch. I've never met him. don't know anything about him. It's just a couple of scriptures in the Bible. I know there's an ancient book about Enoch that I don't really understand. What's all this about Enoch? I can't shake it. I have this consuming desire to be like Enoch. <laughs> and he said, because of the Enoch generation. That's what the Holy Spirit's doing. He's raising up an Enoch generation. Can you imagine a whole company of people like him. Couldn't be touched. We know that kings feared him. Enoch was the first king of kings and lord of lords. He's not the king. He's not the lord of lords. But he was a king. Kings feared him. Lords, kings and lords. Jesus is the king of kings and lord of lords. Who's the kings and lords? Children of God. Hmm? Might be you. Amen? Hey. Kingship, lordship. King of kings and lord of lords. Enoch's one of them. But he was the king of kings and lord of lords. He's the first one. God always has um, forerunners. Now he's, not, he's not God as in creator God. He's a son of God. But remember what I said about the creator who has sons? Like we have sons, like we have daughters. Aren't we supposed to be like our father? Those that see Enoch, they know, they know he's not God, but he's so similar to God in that he glows. He's happy. Enoch's very creative. He seems to know everything about everybody. He's not up himself about it. He's the most humble person, most unassuming, humble, happy person. That's what God's after everywhere. He has us predestined, foreordained to come to be image bearers of his son, Jesus Christ. What helped Enoch along his way is he got to see the incarnate son of Jesus before he came, understand what he would do, understand what it would be like afterwards. So he was able to form in his own thinking the image of the living God. Once we start getting our minds transformed and we start to form the true image of God, it's so much easier to imitate. How can you imitate someone you don't know? Scripture says in Ephesians, imitate God as beloved, dearly beloved children. Well, if all we know is the Jesus of whatever religion that may not be the true image, that's all you can imitate. You can only imitate what you know. This is why we've got uh, so much rebellion in the earth because there's so many rebellious um, people, <coughs> parents. <laughs> there's so much religion. Religion's gone rampant because Christianity became religious and it just bred religion. More religion, more religion. More, more bondage. Further and further and further away from the image of God with just these good, good works, but it left the image of God behind. God wants to restore the image of God in our thinking so that we, we can imitate so that we can be like the one that we love. A little guy down there, I'm thinking, okay, now how's he going to be? Isn't, he doesn't know how to conduct himself here. He's looking around, not knowing what to do. I'll lie on my back and look up. You probably watched him, I heard him, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll grunt a few times, see if that gets a reaction. I said, Shh, that's enough. Mm. He climbed up on me and snuggled in for a bit. That was not uh, what I should have been doing, obviously. Finding his way. It's going to take time for you and me to find our way. In the image of God, it takes time. These guys had hundreds and hundreds of years. Enoch was not mature enough in his thinking, probably didn't even have the will and the desire in place till he was 65. Then he went after God. 
and walk steadily with God. 65. Then he had 300 years of walking with God. And the, the uh, Enoch, the book itself, and other books bear witness that he was uh, transfigured. And um, he didn't belong here no more. It's going to come a time where there's going to be many transfigured. Brother Copeland many years ago saw the transfigured ones. Way into the future of the millennium. I don't know how far it was, but he, he said he saw these vehicles, these cars like driving along like on air. They weren't actually on the road anymore. And as they drove along, they were, they were energised. Some sort of technology. He, he could, I think he just said it was like some sort of technology like solar or getting heat or energy from somewhere. And they just, they're just they're energised. Just cruising around. Sort of the future. And saw groups of people. Groups of just natural people. Just natural people. And uh, having fellowship, Bible readings. Talking amongst themselves. And then they would say, here comes one of the shining ones. Here comes one. Here comes. Here comes the son of God. Here comes one. The glorious church. Yeah. Obviously you would say that with Jesus. Obviously. But there are other shining ones. Predestined for ordained. You know it was one. Um, obviously, yeah, you've got Moses set apart. Joseph to do his job. King David to do his job. Many of us call to do a job for God that we have to find out what it is. And he has to do the work and form the image of God within us so that we can complete it. And maybe it's going to take a little bit longer than the short life we live. So God's going to have to extend life back out again. So that we have time. Restore health. You can't fulfill the will of God when you're sick. Restore wealth so that we are the ones controlling the media. The media can't do anything, the, the, the globalists can't do anything with that money. You take their money away, you take away their power. Mm-hmm. Mm. You take away their voice, you take away their lending capability, you take away their possessing capability, no, they'll just come to nothing. Like the scriptures say, they'll, they'll cry and weep and howl for their, 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 their money's corrupted them. And it's making their flesh burn. They just want to get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. God will either take it or they'll be just giving it all away, just like the Egyptians did. Give me your money. They just did, just gave them everything. Jewelry, the lot, have it all. Go, just leave, just get out. Terrified of them. We're going to possess the stuff, we're going to possess the land, we're going to possess good health, we're going to possess, repossess long life, we're going to fulfill our destiny. And there's more in the womb coming through. That's why Satan is determined to kill them off. Some haven't even been born. Some haven't even come into the world yet. It's not their time, but when it is, they'll glow like Noah glowed. Well, it's not fair. How come I didn't? How come I wasn't glowing? <laughs> yeah, just, 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 just uh, the humanity side of us that thinks thoughts like that. This is God's kingdom. This is God we're talking about. It's His purpose of who comes where and who does what. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought I had choice. I can do whatever I want. You can, but you won't fulfill the destiny that way. To find what God wants and do that. As I said, I've said to you before, it'll probably make more sense now. I felt that this lady in the back room now was causing me trouble. Wins in the bad head. Wasn't for her. God said I gave her the perfect wife. Been confused by it. I loved her. Always loved my wife. We've got a good marriage. It's never a criticism. It's me that's getting worked on, remember? Me that's getting worked on. But you know, when you mature, you uh, look for someone else to blame. Huh. See, just do this and get these things sorted out. Got her to break through all that whinging one time. I gave her the perfect wife for you. Yeah. It got me excited, but it was confusing. Well, I don't understand how. Because <laughs> he's got these problems. he got more problems than the other half. Half the problems you thinking she's a problem. And you're the actual biggest problem there is. Hey, God can really humble you if you want to get honest. <laughs> Ooh. Alex, yeah, absolutely. But he doesn't do it in a condemning way. He just wants to lift you out of the deception, of the selfishness, of the pride. There's layer after layer of pride and ego. Just ego, the male ego. You know, why can't we just walk along and just be ourselves and be, no, put ourselves back and just a woman. Hmm. It's just that bit. 67, 80 year old, they reckon even the real old ones are in the nursing homes. 
I can barely, you know, the moggy, we're losing the mind, so. And the drooly. They're in their teeth. The foxy, foxy mama goes past. <laughs> they still look. It's the flesh. All these things need changing, altering, transforming. Adam, seventh, down, Enoch, then Methuselah, number eight, Lamech, number nine, Noah, number ten. There's dozens and dozens and dozens. The promise to Abraham and his descendants were for a thousand generations. There's a work to do. And there's plenty of time to do it. But we get impatient, thinking, oh God, if you don't do something now, they're all going to take over. Um, we've got to... What God was sharing with me, and see if I can recall it, was that what he's doing is he's preparing the sons of God through this time of waiting, of long suffering. Mm -hmm. So that when the wicked are destroyed or taken out or have lost all their power, lost their wealth, lost everything, the sons of God will have the maturity to handle the time. There's no point in having God judge the world and take out all the wicked and take their money from them and give it to the righteous and the righteous don't know what to do with it and just get all selfish with it and um, live for themselves and just ruin themselves like many that win the lotto. I well, just win the lotto and they spend thousands and tens of thousands of people on win the lotto. Some of them win the lotto and you know, ruins them. The very thing they hunger for is just, just so they can consume it on their lusts. But if you grow in maturity and as the wealth comes by the blessing of God, and there's such wealth, such blessing coming. This may be why there's so many delays and why it's taken so long. Yes, God's doing work in the nations. He's preparing them, but he's preparing us to receive the wealth, the glory. With the glory comes wealth. Always has in the Bible. Amen? And with the wealth, with the abundance that we know is on our shores, it's about to come out, cast your bread, it'll come back after many days. It's just, I feel it's just on our shores, ready to be washed up. You just have to pick it up. It'll be that easy. But it does take time to go out. The currents take it out. I have to go around the world, come back on the shores again. What goes around comes around, and our time is coming, and we've just got to patiently wait it out. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming. Days of the coming. Not when Jesus comes, the days of the coming. He's coming, coming first to and through his people, and eventually there will be a physical coming at some time. At some time, could be a year, could be ten, hundred years. We, we really don't know. All the devil has tricked people with end times, tricked me, tricked us all in some ways, to some degree, that the end times is all about when Jesus comes physically. There is a hope of the manifesting sons of God that must come first, the restoration of all things first. How is the world going to know that they can know God if there aren't others who know God? Those at the time of Enoch, were inspired by his life. And many tried to be like him without going through the process. And some of them uh, went up when he went up afterwards. And uh, they did with their faith, but they froze and fell down. <laughs> it's very cold up there. You go start going through the heavens, it's very cold. You know what it's like when you fly through planes. But there is a generation that will rise, that live here and live there. We will be changing and changing until we start to glow. And God will do a work of purification in us that so we won't want to sin anymore with our eyes. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. God's going to peel off this pride. He's going to continue doing a work in us if we want it. But it's going to take a lot of humility because we have to change in our thinking. And the biggest pride issues are in our thinking. It's, it's, it's the ego of knowledge. It's the pride of knowledge. It's hanging on to our, to our previous mindsets. And as God has been revealing things to me, you have to stoop down. A little bit lower to receive and a little bit lower and and that continuing process uh, has to keep undergoing its transforming process in their thinking and for some it's too difficult and they abort the process they can't go past a certain point and that's that's it that's my theology and I'm not changing um, there's basic theology Father, Son, Holy Ghost you know Good angels, bad angels. You know, you can't dispute any of the... All the basics are still there. The foundational things are there. But we've got to build a house. And when most of the building materials aren't even known or understood, or most of them are banished from our understanding, they're even hidden away. When they come, we just have to um, have the humility to be at least willing to look. 
and to understand. Amen? The flat earth thing's a big thing these days. The whole reason the flat earth's a big thing is because Satan's trying to hide something. That the earth isn't even solid. It's hollow. And that's for another time. But you've got to be open to at least consider. And for someone to just be offended and think, oh, that's it. He's lost me now. Thought he's a nice guy until then. Hollow. Sun's hollow, earth's hollow. Um, all cells, all, all, um, all atomic things have little things running around the outside. Most of it's hollow. Most of the space is nothing. Most of it's desk is hollow. Uh, and, you know, is there, is, there, is there life in the earth? Was the garden in there? Did it come to the outside from the inside? Why did they have to travel a long way to get to a dry land when the boat was just floating around Arax just over there? Just near Israel, not far away. It's not a long way. Just food for thought. A lot of stuff I've been going through for a while. And I'll start sharing stuff where you can get it if you want. And it's, not necess- it's not so important. It's not going to uh, get you saved. But you have to start stretching your mind and be willing to listen. And willing to understand. Mm. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name. We'll go back to this last verse and read this verse again. Hebrews 11. Verse 5. As an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked all over and couldn't find him because God had taken him. We know on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. Verse 6. It's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe that both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. Amen. Hallelujah.